You know, each prayer that was prayed this morning was very important. We learned that in Sunday school. Prayer is important. But like David prayed just a minute ago, that God will tell us what we need to hear. And that's what we need and what we want. Hallelujah. If you will, we're going to turn to 1 Peter chapter 4 and verse 11. And it says that very thing that the prayers that were prayed already this morning. Hallelujah. 1 Peter chapter 4 verse 11 through verse 14. If any man and that's man, that could be man and woman, man or woman. If any man speak, let him speak as the oracles of God. If any man minister, let him do it as the ability which God giveth, that God in all things might be glorified through Jesus Christ, to whom be praise, dominion forever and ever. Now, Verse 12 is another paragraph, so that means I can talk about verse 11 for one minute. It says, If anyone speaks, let him speak as the oracles of God. What is that? As what God says. No more, no less. My friend, we need to speak what the Bible says. We need to tell what God wants us to tell. We don't need to add to it or to change it. And while we we talking on that, one of y'all out there asked me, said, what's the message going to be about tomorrow? And I told you what I thought it was going to be. And I was hoping it would be on that. And that was going to have to happen another time. Because it was yesterday evening, all of a sudden, I began to be, I felt in another direction. I began to think of something that happened 23 years ago. And I'll tell you about it in a few minutes. And I wanted to know what one of the martyrs said. And when I began to look it up, I learned some things. And that made me realize God wanted me to go in this direction. All right, we done read in verse 11 of 1 Peter 4. If we speak, let it be the word of God. That's what that means. Nothing more, no, nothing less. Then verse 12, we spoke about this even last week. Look at verse 12, 1 Peter 4. Beloved, think it not strange concerning the fiery trial. And y'all always help me read it so we can understand. Which is to try you. And that means it's going to happen. As though some strange thing has happened unto you. But what are we supposed to do when trouble comes? Rejoice! And again I say rejoice. Be exceeding glad. Count it joy when you fall into these troubles. Rejoice in so much as you're partakers of Christ's sufferings. That when his glory shall be revealed you may be glad also with exceeding joy. If you be reproached for the name of Christ Now that verse 14 is kind of what I saw when I began to do some reading last night on on something that happened in 1999. If you be reproached for the name of Christ, what does it say? Happy are ye, for the spirit of glory and of God rests upon you. On their part, God's evil spoken of, but on your part, God is glorified. Amen. 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 Now, I want two other verses that's good to me. I'm in the book of Mark now. Let's go to Matthew, Mark. Book of Mark, chapter 4. I'm doing a little better. I ain't messed up yet. Have a little good. <laughs> Give me time. <laughs> Give me time. <laughs> you got to have faith now. Mark chapter 4. Let's 
page is that on? Mark chapter 4, verse 35. <laughs> God's good. Jesus expounded all things to the disciples when it was just him and the disciples. Prior to that, he was alone praying. He prayed all night. And he ministered all day. So understand, understand now, Jesus is God. He's the son of the living God. He's almighty. But yet he laid that glory aside and took on the form of of human flesh, he was in, placed in the womb of a virgin, and that virgin wrapped flesh around the word for nine months. The virgin gave birth in Bethlehem to the Lord Jesus Christ in that statement. Our Lord and Savior's bed was a cow trough with hay in it. And his clothes, or he was wrapped with rags that were just fragments that had been thrown away. That's our Savior that was born in Bethlehem. All right? You understand that he is God, but yet he laid everything aside. He took on flesh, blood like you've got. When Somebody hit him, he felt it, and it hurt like it would you. He felt pain like you. He felt in his heart when he was rejected like when you are rejected. All that I'm telling you all that to lead up to this. Him being in human form, but yet perfect. In verse 35. Mark chapter 4, the same day when evening was come, Jesus said to his disciples, let us pass over unto the other side. Now listen, God's word is true, isn't it? Amen. What did he just say? Let's pass over the other side. Let us Go across the Sea of Galilee. What? Seven miles across that thing. 150 feet deep. 13 miles long, seven miles across. We're going to go on the other side of this sea. Let's go on the other side. He gets in the ship, gets in the boat. He said, let's go. All right, now I want you to look at <coughs> chapter 5, verse 1. You know what happened, but I just want you to notice it. He says in verse 35 of Mark 4, let's pass over to the other side. What did he say in Mark chapter 5, verse 1? And they came over unto the other side of the sea, to the country of the Galileans. What am I telling you? He says, let's go over to the other side. What happened? They got to the other side. My friend, what happens between let's go and us getting there? Because he's been up all night praying the night before and he ministered all day. Like I told you, he took on human flesh. His body's tarred. But he kept on ministering even though of that. He got in that ship. He went to sleep. He wasn't worried about nothing. <laughs> And he tells us, don't worry about nothing. All of a sudden, the, the water began to go to waves. It began to come over the ship. The ship's filling up with water. They run down there and tell Jesus, said, Jesus, don't you care? We're fixing to drown. What's wrong with you? <laughs> you know, he wasn't bothered about it. But why do you think that storm came? Who sent that storm? Why did that happen? The trouble you're going through, why are you going through it? I'm asking you, 
why do you think you're going through the trouble you're going through right now? <coughs> hey, listen. God's in control. And God loves you. He says, let go to the other side. They got there. But a storm came. <coughs> and, and you can get into theology and studies and whatever. But I do know that God is in control. But God lets things happen for a reason. Amen. Job was a righteous man. The most righteous on planet earth at that time. Job is older than even before Moses. The book of Job is the oldest book in the Bible. But the faith that man had and what he went through, and we read it, were that the devil himself is the one who set the storms and killed the children of Job. But God allowed it. But God allowed it for a reason. <coughs> and Job is alive today speaking According to Hebrews 11. Because every time I have trouble, guess what book I go to? No matter if it's my son getting killed in the car wreck, book of Job I'm reading. Or something else happens, book of Job I'm, I'm going to turn to. Because that man has been through everything I will ever go through and more, and he handled it. And it was to God's glory. And what I want to tell you today is, Jesus says, let's go. And we're going to make it. But the distance between there is for a reason. Don't you give up and don't you back up. Hallelujah. But what I want to do is to tell you that, like I said, what I thought I was going to speak on got changed yesterday evening. For some reason I began to think about wonderful sweet little girl that was a Christian her name is Cassie Renee Burnell she was born November the 6th 1981 she stepped into heaven April the 20th 1999 17 years old Eric Harrison at Columbine, Columbine High School asked a question along with, and I didn't realize it was two of them, that it was Eric and Columbine. But they stood there, and I knew the story of how they said, it, do you believe in God? If you do, we're going to kill you. She says, I believe in God. She died. The very one that donated her hair every year, long blonde hair, the cancer society. She went to heaven. And I knew about that part. I didn't realize it was two murderers <laughs> in that case. I didn't realize that it lasted right at one hour. I also did not know that in 1998, Columbine High School had a board meeting and they decided not to ever speak or teach the Bible or offer it in Columbine high school in Colorado anymore but there is a course that they're going to make mandatory called the theory of evolution I did not know that I did not know that there was a group that began to grow to encourage that and one of them was <coughs> Eric Harris and the other one was Hill and Bob and several others but yet there was Christians in that school Christian young folks in Columbine High School that stood up for what was right and would not back up and these three or four people, boys they wanted everybody to just believe in evolution and they didn't want God anywhere. Just a few days before this, they commanded until the Ten Commandments was taken off the wall. And by the way, in the hallway next to the library where the Ten Commandments hung, 
It's one of the things I'm going to tell you about. I was asked, do you believe in God? And we're shot to death. One of the Ten Commandments is, thou shalt not kill, isn't it? It was taken down, and they, them two boys stood right there. Right at an hour, this one on. I'm going to tell you about the first martyr. It wasn't Cassie Renee. Cassie is a Christian. And a book was written by her, about her, from her family, and it says, and she said yes. And that was one of the best sellers there was. The first victim on November, I mean, uh, April the 20th, 1999, the first one, Rachel Joy Scott was the first one they held the gun to and asked her the question. See, Rachel, I understand as I read read that last night, she was a senior, and she said, when I graduate, I'm going to prepare for ever how long I need, and I'm going to be a missionary. And I, I know we're living in the latter days and I'm going to do mission work everywhere God sends me till the day he calls me home. I'm going to lead people to Christ. That's what Rachel Joy Smith said. And let me tell you what. Her journal today has it written in it. But Eric Harris they mocked. Tell them Bob and all of them that believed that they came from monkeys. And you know, when you say you come from a monkey, you know what you're doing? You're calling God a monkey, and that ain't funny, you know it? They mocked Rachel along with everybody else that claimed to be a Christian. They made fun of them because they believed in Christian values. And you know, usually you think people who murder or have complicated shootings, massacres, are people who have or, or don't have friends or thrown out to the side or whatever. Do you realize one of them was a ladies' man, and that was old Killing Ball, and these Christians would not go out on dates with him. He didn't like that. They said, until you come to Christ, we're not going to eat supper with you. Nothing. So they hated these Christian girls. They actually hated them. These group of boys. So Rachel the first one, Eric Harris, Kellebog, yet they mocked her. She says, but I'm not going to apologize. She wrote this in her journal. And her daddy put it to a book. But it says, I'm not going to apologize to you or anyone else for standing up for Jesus. If I have to sacrifice, she said this weeks before they killed her, if I have to sacrifice everything, I will do it, but I will not deny my Lord and Savior. Two books was written about Rachel Joy Scott. Her father, Daryl Scott, used the words written in a journal <coughs> to write these books. A call to compassional revolution. And another one is the day Rachel smiled. And I did not know it, but a film was made. And it, 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 it was like two million dollars came in through that film within the first few days of it. So what I'm telling you is these people died for Christ. Whether it would be Rachel, Cassie, or Val, they killed her. And then there was a couple boys they killed that believed in Christ. But you see, that school did not want the Bible taught or in the school anymore and took the Ten Commandments down. But there was 
And you might feel this way. I'm the only Christian on the job. I'm the only one that believes in God. Let me tell you what. You don't hear about them cats that finally turned the gun on their self. What was it? It was uh, 15 killed in that hour's time. But yet they turned the gun on themselves and killed themselves. But these Christians live on, whether it's Cassie or Rachel or, or Val or ever who. They, they ministered to me last night. I had tears in my eyes as I began to read their, what their family said about them and how they stood for Christ. So when God says, let's go to the other side, you're going to get there. But there's going to be something in between there. But yet everything works for good. And don't you give up. Please don't give up. But you know, to be a Christian, you got to be Bible-centered. <clears throat> there is a self-denial. There is a bearing of the cross. If you're going to follow Christ, yet that's the most serious thing you could ever do in life is to follow Christ. The world might mock it or think it's not. But my friend, that is the most serious, most business thing you could ever do is to make a decision not only to ask Christ to come into your life, but then begin to do what Christ has told you to do. Amen. We need to be a witness. It's, it's been long enough that so-called Christians have just shoved their shoulders like this and said, what are we going to do? What are we going to do? And just keep backing up, backing up, backing up. And we've done that and done that and done that. And look where the United States of America is today. That's right. My friends, a lot's going on right now that you might not realize. I hate to tell you about it. I'd rather be talking about what I thought I was going to get to talk about. But I got changed. It's not normal. How many IRS did they vote to hire? 85,000. 85,000. All right, what are they wanting to do with the police? Defund them and de-arm them because Nancy Pelosi says a police does not need a gun to check driver license numbers. That's right. Okay, let's hear that. But do you know, by what I read, the reason you can't find any ammunition for anything to go deer hunting with today or to go squirrel hunting or rabbit hunting, you know why? <coughs> Guess who's it bought for? Not the police. The IRS is buying ammunition and military guns yep. and body armor. Yep. And when they audit you, they're going to look just like those, what, 51 FBI's that tore into Donald Trump's house yep. a couple of days ago with those machine gun looking things and they had the body, body armor that the bullet wouldn't touch them. Broke in his house. Took his wife's clothes, threw them out in the yard, turned them inside outwards, looking for things. See, the IRS, let me tell you about America now. We need to pray and don't give up. But there's two, or it could be three groups of people that's hated in America. Three different groups Christians. It's one of them. You want to know what another one is? A person who works hard to make a dollar and pays taxes. They're not appreciated. And then anybody believes in the, what the Second Amendment? Those three are hated. If you're a Christian, if you work and pay taxes, you know, I can understand if the IRS is going to uh, check these people that's buying and selling and raising dope. Or I can understand the IRS if they're going to go at the border and stop these people from bringing, hey, what the name of that stuff is, that one grain of salt, size of grain of salt, a kid, and enough to come across yesterday, the border to kill everybody in the United States of America. You know, a, few, a couple weeks ago, the, one of the border patrols stopped the vehicle just to check it, and it was full of that stuff, and it put him in the emergency room, just him standing up there looking to see what was in the vehicle. <coughs> Can 
Cassie Renee Burnell's in heaven. Rachel Joy Scott's in heaven. They living on today because they said we're not going to deny and ban and the rest of them. We're not going to deny the Lord Jesus Christ even though you want us to. That there is a heaven and that Jesus Christ is the only hope we got. Only the Christian faith that you have can claim that their leader died and rose again. No other religion can do that. And that Jesus, our Savior, is alive today. No other religion can do that. Many graves, they have their inscription, here lies and has, has a name on it. But on the tomb of Jesus, it says, he's not here. He's risen. Amen. Amen. Christianity is founded on one and one only. It's in the Lord Jesus Christ. To a sinner, a Christian's goodness is to rebuke the wicked. But yet a Christian is hated. You know why? Because a Christian is a reflection, a mirror, a light, and it's showing how perverted this world system is. And if they can wipe Christians off the face of the earth, then it won't matter if they live in adultery and they live crooked and they steal and lie. You keep being the salt. You keep being the light. The problem with America is the light became dim and the salt has lost its savior. You're the salt of the earth, my friend. You got a job to do. We should be closer to God today than we've ever been in history. Our hearts should be closer, our soul, our body, than any other time. problem in America is that Christianity has been watered down and we've been not standing up for what we should. Amen. I'm not so saying like our Sunday school brought out, I'm not saying jump up on the side of the road scream and holler, but people's watching you. And I found that out. I told you about the text from the person who, who's in heaven today. Never knew that she even thought about it. Are remembered or known. I ain't even thought about what all I've been through. But my friend, no matter what you go through, he says, let's go to the other side. You going through it. <laughs> One guy was talking, and a fellow standing beside me says, how you doing? He says, I'm going through hell. And the fellow standing beside me says, if you're going through, you're all right. Just don't stop there. <laughs> hey, look. You might be going through just about everything, but don't stop there. The Christian is to take his place with moral courage, stand for what's right, and don't back up. You know, when a baby's born, they're cute as they can be. And it's all right that they mess their britches up and spit on you. And you pick them up and you got your suit on and they vomit on you. That's all right. Amen. That's cute. That's expected. But if that baby's doing that when he's 15 years old, something's wrong. And when a Christian first gets saved, he's going to mess his britches up. He's going to do this, he's going to do that. When he's just, but yet, when he's been a Christian for a few years, if he's still doing that, something's wrong. It's time for us to grow up, you hear me? We are, we're not just called to become Christians. We're called to be a Christian. That's to be Christ-like. I fear that so often Christians get the idea 
or at least seem to give out the idea to the world that the truth is only fiction. You know, it's kind of like a Santa Claus religion. Somebody mentioned it in Sunday school. My friend, Jesus is Lord. Heaven is real. Heaven's great. But I want to tell you this. There's only one way there. And if you try any other way, you're going to hell and Jesus spoke more on hell than he did on heaven. Why? Because if the bridge is washed out, we don't need to put other signs out. We need to put out danger ahead, bridge out. And Jesus warned us. There's one way into hell, and that's rejecting Jesus Christ. <clears throat> but there's no exit. My friend, can I give to you the best I can? Eternity. Can you imagine how long that is? Eternity. When the Clorox jug was on fire and dropped on my <coughs> bare foot, what, 60 years ago or 70 years ago, or 60 something years ago, I ain't quite that old, 65 years ago, my, my foot was on fire for probably two or three minutes. And let me tell you what, two or three minutes is terrible to be on fire, but on fire forever. No water. To drink or put the fire out. Don't be a half Christian. You know, even the world that rejects <laughs> Jesus <clears throat> is quick to recognize a real Christian. They do. <clears throat> And as one spoke this morning, people know that you mean business. People know when you come to church, you pray. And that this church is known to, to be a church that believes in prayer. Let's don't let that cool down. Let's put a little bit more wood on the fire. God told them priests, he said, you build that fire for the offering and don't you let it go out. You keep the wood coming in there and you keep that fire going. Some of us, we need a stick or two more on our fire. It's about to go out. There's too many professing Christians and too many Christians that do nothing is what it is. You know, every day when I hear the news, I can only say the Bible's true and it's happening. But I don't need to back up and say it's got to happen. Just sit back. I've been guilty of that. I need to pray like Daniel. I need to pray. He prayed 21 days. Sometimes we pray for 21 seconds. If we don't get the answer, we give up. Christianity is something we need to totally get involved with. Not just halfway, my friend all the way and in closing I want to tell you becoming a Christian is a work for a moment it's great becoming a Christian is great <clears throat> but being a Christian is work of a lifetime not just one moment somebody says well I became a Christian 20 years ago that's good but to be a Christian is to work and keep it alive. The world's lost. <clears throat> lost. We need to reach the people. And, and how will they hear unless you go to them and tell them about the love of Christ? We have an altar time right now, if you don't mind. The altar's open, and if you are like me, I want to get closer <clears throat> to God. You just come and pray.